CRISPR is something that many of you may have heard of, but might not know that much about. Let's go through what this is and how it works. Today we think of it as a genome editing tool, but before we get to that, let's start at the beginning of the story. CRISPR is basically a part of the bacterial immune system to defend it against viruses. So here's our bacterium, with a flagellum and a circular DNA. Like many other things in biology, CRISPR was named before anybody really knew what it did, so the name might not seem to fit the function here, but it stands for Clustered Regularly Interspersed Short Palindromic Repeats. So basically, CRISPR is a repeated sequence of DNA, which I'm showing with these red dots here. Alright, so how does this work? Well, let's say that a virus is attacking this bacterium, and the virus releases its DNA into the cell. How can the bacterium defend itself? Well, that's where CRISPR comes in. The CRISPR system has two parts. One is a protein called Cas9, where Cas just stands for CRISPR-associated system, and the other is a guide RNA. Both of these are encoded within that repeat sequence in the bacterial DNA. Now this guide RNA is loaded onto the Cas9 protein, and the CRISPR-Cas9 complex will encounter a particle of viral DNA. Now this is not just any bacterium, but it's one that has evolved to be resistant to this particular virus, and the mechanism of that resistance is that a part of the guide RNA is complementary to part of the viral DNA. So the key point here is that this guide RNA gives the system specificity. It allows the Cas9 protein to target a specific sequence of target DNA because the guide RNA is complementary to that target DNA. So now what can Cas9 do? Well, it cleaves the viral DNA. But in medicine, we're more interested in how this system can be used in other ways than defending bacteria against viruses. I just showed you how the CRISPR-Cas9 system can be used to create a break in a specific DNA sequence, and it's easy to imagine how we could modify the system by changing the sequence of the guide RNA to whatever we want, which allows us to target any DNA sequence that we want. For example, we can create a guide RNA sequence which is complementary to the area around a specific area of the CFTR gene. Do you remember what the most common mutation is that causes cystic fibrosis? That would be the deletion of the 508th codon of the CFTR gene, which encodes phenylalanine. Now if we want to edit this sequence, we need to introduce one more element to our system here. We can add another sequence of DNA, which is complementary to the gene of interest, but with the correction we want to make. So in the case of the missing codon in the CFTR gene, we can introduce a new sequence which isn't missing anything. When the cell's native DNA repair system arrives to fix the break made by Cas9, it can use this new sequence as a template. And now we've fixed an unwanted mutation. At the time this video is made, the CRISPR-Cas9 system is not yet approved to treat any disease, but its ability to target and edit specific sequences in living systems has already been incredibly valuable in research, and a variety of clinical trials are underway to treat things like inherited mutations and cancer.